babe, people are always saying like marriage is really hard mm -hmm. or it's hard work. Right. But what does that even mean? Stick around to find out. Welcome back to Roads to Forever. I'm Terry, And I'm Kyle. And in this video, we're going to share what we wish we knew before we got married. Trust us when we tell you the minute you get married, you're going to get lots of advice. Lots of it. From married individuals and those who've been married and divorced. So we decided to put together a list of three things specific to us that we believe could also be helpful to you. So what's the first thing, babe? So the first thing is that the first year of marriage is hard, especially when it comes to balancing out different expectations. Now, for, especially intimacy. For me, I may want to be intimate five times a month. My you partner, mean a day? Well, okay, yes, five times a day, give or take. But um, <laughs> for this one over here who's talking, um, she may want to be intimate five times a year. Yes, large gap. But um, <laughs> but um, at the end of the day, regardless of what your um, intimacy preference is, you have to discuss it with your partner so that you can be on the same page and have a relationship goal as to how you're going to accomplish that goal. Another thing to think about in terms of balancing out expectations are when it comes to household chores. So having a conversation upfront about who's responsible for something as simple as washing the bathroom um, or taking out the trash, you know, for me, Kyle might be used to washing the bathroom once a week. And I grew up in a household where, you know, the bathroom was washed twice a week. And so, you know, you have to have that conversation about like, well, what is, you know, going to be the right thing for us? So it's really important that you're remembering now it's about we as a team versus me or what I'm used to doing. So that's very important when we're talking about expectations when you get into marriage. I think one would be a middle ground if two is the other standard. So I think we should be okay. good. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, moving on, um, the second thing would be pressure to have children now. I'm with my wife when people come up to her and ask her this question. So I'm going to pass it right along to you, sweetheart. So ladies, let us have a one-on-one, -on -one, a heart-to-heart. -heart. I'm just gonna give you the real deal right here so that you know what to expect and how you can deal with this because this is something that can be really challenging. Mm -hmm. But the minute you get married, you are on wound watch. Well, not you are, but everybody <laughs> else is on wound watch, right? Nice. So people are gonna ask you, so when are you having children? Um, are you pregnant? And God forbid you gain any weight because then people assume automatically that you know you're pregnant and I guess in a way it helps you keep accountable in terms of the food you're putting in your mouth mm -hmm. but <laughs> you know the minute everyone's asking you it's like my goodness can I just like enjoy my husband like you know we just got married this is our first time coexisting in this for the same space you know we didn't live together before we got married and so now we're learning each other learning each other's habits you know getting to do things together that we never did before we got married and so you know kids are a lot of work and Lots i know that work. because i see my friends who have children and like what they're dealing with and so i know they take a lot of time and i think as individuals who didn't live together before hadn't had sex before marriage that these are things that we have to figure out together before you can bring a child into the mix and so you know everyone constantly asking you and ask, saying to you well what are you waiting for that becomes really hard so it's something that like i didn't know would be so much of a big deal before we got married <laughs> absolutely and um the third thing is being intentional aka being proactive about working on your relationship Definitely. you want to add on that babe? yeah so i think it's really important that you're making your spouse a priority you know because life happens you know you have a job and you may have to meet some type of deadline for your job whether it's with a project if you're in the church or you're working with a community or you're volunteering you're gonna have a lot of things that are tugging at you from all different angles and so you have to make sure that those things are secondary to your spouse mm -hmm, absolutely um, another thing is basically date night and ladies and gentlemen I want to give you a quick reality check 
The thing that got your partner is the same thing that's going to keep them. And I feel like sometimes in marriage, we get so caught up in the monotony of being married and already having our partner that we forget to do the things that got them in the first place. And instead of going forward, we end up going backwards. So really being intentional about doing those things that your partner loves and singling out a bit of time for just the two of you. Something that me and Terry do is we have, like I said, what's called date night, where we will silence our phones so no one's to contact us and we are just together with one another. It doesn't matter what we're doing. We could go out to the movies. We could stay home and watch a movie. We could go out to eat or maybe cook at the house and eat there. But it's just time that we have to be together because think about it. When you're, even if you're at home on a work day or even outside of a work day, you have different things that you're thinking about, different worries, different stresses, whatever the case may be, everyone's life is different, but there's something else on your mind other than your partner. So you want to not only be with them physically, but also be with them mentally because being in the same space without being there mentally is the same as not being there. So you want to take the time to just disconnect from everything else and reconnect with your partner. Um, something else that I think about about this idea of being intentional mm -hmm. is that you really need to love your spouse in their love language. Mm -hmm. So when we're thinking about emotions, the way we not only receive but express our emotion is through our love language. And so Kyle's love language is physical touch. Yes, it is. And I'm words <laughs> of affirmation. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so if you have not read the book, you and your partner should definitely read the book about the five love, love languages. And we'll link it below in the description box um, so that you can check it out make sure you read that book and also complete the assessment because once you understand your partner's love language trust us it will make life so much easier because the way you respond to your partner's emotional needs and the way you um, receive um, love from your partner will be through your love language so that's something to definitely keep in mind um, as you are moving into marriage absolutely and before we go I just want to let you know sweetheart you are so beautiful like look at you your skin is glowing I just love you so much. Stop. Was See, I... <laughs> he's trying to use words of affirmation on me right now. Is it working? No. <laughs> yeah. Not mine. <laughs> um, so those were just the three things that for us really stood out. But above all else, there's something we want to leave you with that you absolutely cannot leave out of your marriage. And that is prayer much prayer equals much power so you definitely want to make sure that's something you're doing on a daily basis you know going on your knees and asking god to make sure that he's using the both of you to just be a blessing and even if you think that your partner may have some flaws ladies it is not your job to change anybody but it's your job to pray to god so that maybe he can work on you and transform your heart so that you can be a better partner for your spouse and your spouse will be a better partner to you. But you both have to love God first so you can love each other even better. If you've been blessed by this video, make sure you like it, give it a thumbs up, um, share with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more content just like this. We want to thank you so much for watching Roads to Forever, and we'll see you next time. Have a great one, guys.